asking this. Have you ever uh, explored that Bitly sheet which I gave you? That link? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you find it helpful somehow? Yes, ma'am. That's cool. Okay, if you want to, uh, that I should do some changes over there or I should add some things, so please let me know, okay? I will yes, try my best to incorporate all the things. So, as I remember that in last class, we have left at Skrugosh. Let's start from uh, there. I've told you about a few instruments, okay, which help you to do more precise calculation, give the results with more accuracy and everything. So firstly, can you, uh, somebody, you know, out of you can explain me ki what is ordinary scale, what is one year scale, and uh, then I'll explain you Skrugosh. Just give me the revision of last class, basically. Come on. We have studied about vernier caliper scale, which is used to measure the diameter of any round object and the depth of any object. OK. And why do we need uh, these special scales? Why ordinary scale is not sufficient for us? Um, because it to give the accurate measurement. OK. okay. Uh, Mandisha, can you give me the, uh, we know that this reason in numbers, like what is the uh, drawbacks or limitation of an ordinary scale which we can fulfill or overcome uh, while using the, these special scales? Uh, Ma'am, uh, to use, uh, to measure uh, the least count like 0 0.01 uh, um, uh, centimeter, uh, uh, we can use that centimeter uh, using a screw, uh, vernier caliper and we cannot measure uh, with a uh, simple scale or a uh, um, normal scale very nice i will shikha you want to add something butcha ma'am i was saying that vernier caliper gives a more accurate value than the ordinary scale okay or uh, that's cool that's nice uh, actually nice explanation I would say ki, uh, if I come to factual data, then I would say that an ordinary scale can give me the result beyond one decimal place, right? Or, or up to one decimal place. But when it comes to special scales like one year scale or screw wash, they will give me the, re, uh, the answer beyond one decimal place. That's why these are preferable, right? And you all are right, it gives more accurate result. Why? Because the number of significant figures in these uh, results are more than the ordinary scale. That could be a reason also, right? You can connect it from significant figures also. I hope it's OK. Hmm? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. OK. Let's start with this second special uh, instrument, which is a screw gauge. And it is more accurate than vernier scale also, journally, right? I'm talking journally. And even in our syllabus, whatever uh, whatever we uh, will discuss or whatever in, in your exam uh, is going to ask to you, well, these are going to be the journal cases. Okay, they are not going to trouble you much. So I think the uh, instrument is explained in uh, last class, right? I told you about the U frame, about that uh, chair voice. Have I discussed the, these things or not? No, ma'am. No. Okay, so I'm confused with another batch. That's cool. Okay. So uh, this device which you have in front, uh, in on your screen, here uh, we have a U frame. We hold this device by this U frame. Okay. Whatever the uh, object that you want to measure, whether it's a ball or something else, you want to measure a style meter. So you just insert that object in between anvil and a spindle. Do you spot those words? Anvil over here spindle over here which means you will insert the ball in this place okay within these two things and will end spindle you frame is something from where you are holding this device now as you can see in this diagram here we have two kinds of scale main scale which is also known as, known as sleeve and then we have circular scale or pitch scale okay this circular scale is the special one Main scale is like your ordinary scale, okay? So this thimble is something which can move, okay? Which can rotate. You can rotate this thimble. Uh, have you ever, uh, you know, see that screw thing? A screw? Ever? 
Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Have you torn it, unturn it? Like, have you done those activities with screwdriver or something? Ever? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So you know, ki when you move it like this, this screw goes uh, into the plane or whatever the thing uh, you know we have over here. So when I move this thimble like this, am I visible now? Am I visible to you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Okay, so you can see that I have this screw. I'm just moving this thimble. I'm just moving this thimble. I'm rotating it. So uh, a movement is going to be here. Now you can observe that movement. And if I am uh, rotating in this direction, so it is coming out, right? A very simple observation. So that's how we will adjust our object in between alumen and a spindle by moving the thimble. Once you got the precise room, for that object, you will hear a voice, chur voice, and that chur voice is coming from this uh, rec chat. Okay, With, uh, this chur voice means ki the object is perfectly fitted in between anvil and spindle. Now you can uh, run the calculations. Is that okay? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma okay. Now, why here we have this sleeve word? Actually, it has a significance. Wait a minute. Actually, it has a significance uh, at the point when anvil and the spindle are touching each other. It means there is uh, no object in between them. In th uh, that situation, what is going to happen? This circular scale is completely covered the main scale. Okay, You cannot see a single division of main scale at that point. Once you are uh, turning this thimble, this sleeve slowly slowly is going to discover itself you can now read the readings on that main scale are you getting my point initially uh, this circular scale is completely covered uh, the sleeve this main scale you are not able to see a single division on this scale once you uh, un you know you turn it you rotate it you uh, are going to able uh, to see the readings to see the divisions on the main scale. So that's why the word sleeve is going to, uh, uh, you know, is used over here. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. So okay. always associate sleeve with main scale. In some questions, you, maybe there is a uh, sleeve word is used now in, in the place of main scale. So you will get the idea. He, they are talking about the main scale itself. Cool? Cool, cool, cool. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, there are a few amazing things about a screw gauge. One is, uh, okay, I will show you it over here. Can you see a thread like structure in this spindle? A thread like structure, like this. Hmm? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, the concept is, wait a second. When you give a one complete rotation to the circular scale, one thread will discover to you. Are you getting my point? For an example, uh, what I'm saying, the distance moved by screw due to one complete rotation. In one complete rotation, whatever the distance this screw will travel or will move that is equals to the pitch that is equals to the length of one thread it means if your uh, main scale is uh, sorry if your circular scale is covering the first division and you rotate it you know 360 degree so you will come at second thread you will rotate it once more and again that 360 degree division one complete rotation you will come at third division are you getting my point Yes, ma'am. That's how it is designed. So, uh, always remember marking on the main scale is known as pitch. And there are a few things about the pitch which is uh, written over here. Kindly go through this slide and let me know that everything is clear to you. Uh, one more thing that I want to draw your kind attention towards, and that is this micrometer. Uh, micrometer is also a device which is not in our syllabus, so we are not going to discuss that. But sometimes it is asked that why screw gauge is known as micrometer. So the simple thing is it works on the same principle 
as micro a micrometer works on okay and that principle is ki separation in between two threads of a spindle is equals to distance in between two consecutive divisions of main scale which we known as the pitch is that cool yes ma'am just okay just go through the slide and let me know ki ma'am it's okay we can move ahead Is it done? Yes, right. Yes, ma'am. Cool. Now it's time to understand the least count of this device. So here I have a formula that least count, least count. Uh, what do you mean by least count? What is least count? I told you in last class when we are discussing uh, when we were discussing Bernier calipers. Please explain what is least count. Mm -hmm. Explain, Karo. Anyone? Go on. Man, we are missing the uh, main scale division and uh, divided by uh, Bernier scale division by my. And uh, by uh, main scale uh, division, we are multiplying by using a formula, we get the least count. Okay, Gayatri, that is a uh, come you know concise to Bernier calipers. But what is the feel of least count? What is least count? Yes, Miss Bach. The smallest value that can measure by a measuring instrument is called its least count. Very nice. Right, Gayatri? Whatever you are seeing, that is correct because, uh, in the perspective of Bernier calipers. But in general, least count is the smallest measurement that an instrument can make. Okay? Okay, okay. ma'am. Cool. So, least count is pitch upon number of circular divisions. Do I need to explain it or you get the feel of it? I mean, I would love to explain it if you want me to. See, I told you that pitch is the uh, marking on the main scale, right? So on the basis of that, you can measure one centimeter. But I said, okay, now you have 100 divisions on a circular scale. Now you can measure one by hundredth from that device. This is the feel of the sleeves count. Because we have 100 division over here, na? right? You are rotating that uh, scale, right? That circular scale by that thimble. And now you are rotating it. Let's say there are 100 division on that entire circular scale. So basically, you can calculate one by 100th part of the main scale with, uh, you know, in the given conditions. Are you getting it? What I'm saying. Mm -hmm. okay, yes, ma'am. Okay, but it's still a coffee thunder response. Tha. Here we have zero, here we have one, two. This is your main scale. Either you can uh, go with this zero or you can go with this one, right? But what if I want to measure more precisely? So, what will I do? I'll put my circular scale over here. Right, like this. Now you are rotating it. You are rotating it. You are unleashing this division. Huh? You are unleashing this uh, main scale readings. So after some time, maybe. Uh huh. Uh huh. Wait a second. I think these are experimental instruments now. So we need a uh, screw gauge, and that is not such a normal scale. Now nah? you can get it at any stationary shop. But yeah, I hope you will see these things in your. Uh, practical labs now see i go to this point let's say this is the fifth division so now you can calculate this much part also right if i uh 
go like only I rotate it only by one division on the circular scale. Then it is one by whatever the number of circular divisions you have. Hey, a circular scale is this now. This, 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 like this. Reading set. Now, uh, jitne bhi part hai. The total number of divisions on this circular scale divided by. Uh, uh -huh. it's, just listen, uh, just try to understand what I'm saying. Ki, if I want to calculate this thing only, so it is what? One upon the number of divisions now, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Pakka? Pakka, pakka? Yes. That's cool then. So this is the least count of this device. Pitch upon number of circular divisions. Now the point is uh, how to calculate the reading. Like, can you tell me what is the reading in this figure? Let me zoom it in and tell me. What is the reading over here? Without. See, the concept is same. Total reading is equals to main scale reading plus circular scale reading. Whatever we did in uh, vernier calipers. Is that okay? You have one, one more minute. Kindly solve it and then let me know. Aya, kya beta? No, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Koi nahi. See, the concept is same. Uh, let me change the ink. If I want to calculate the reading, it is main scale reading plus circular scale reading. Right. So main scale reading is that division which you are just 
you know, observing just beyond this circular scale. See, this much is covered, right? This much is main scale is covered. So the latest reading which is visible to you is three on the main scale, yes or no? Yes. Yes, ma'am. So yes, it is the reading on main scale just before the circular scale. Okay. Now, when it comes to circular scale reading, it is least count multiplied by number of circular scale division, which is coinciding with main scale division or main scale. Okay. That number of circular division, which is coinciding with the main scale, is into multi uh, sorry, into least count is your circular scale reading. Main scale reading is that latest reading which you can see before the circular scale. Just add those two, two things and you will get the reading. Now, can you answer me about this one? What is the reading over here? Okay, 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 okay. Yes. Now, can you answer me? See, it's six twelve right now. Answer me uh, within six within a one minute. Okay, six thirteen. Are you not getting it? Harshda, I'm giving you the time for one minute to solve it. Are you finding it difficult to calculate the readings? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. OK, OK. So at least convey that thing now. Dekho. OK. Tell me here, what is the division on main scale, which is just before the circular scale? OK, but tell me. 3.5. 3.5. Why 0.5? I can only see 3 now. There is no 0.5. OK, I can see yes. only 3. So main scale reading is 3. Now, what is the least count of this device? Tell me. 0 0.1. OK. Let me check. See, here I have 1 as the pitch, right? 1 centimeter. Hmm? Divided by 100. 0 0.01. Yes, 0 0.01 centimeter which can also be written as one millimeter, right? Yes, ma'am. Right, yeah. Yes, ma'am. I'm very bad with these, um, you know, conversions. So, I mean, yeah. So we have pitch as one millimeter. If I want to calculate the least count, I have to multiply it by, uh, sorry, divide it by number of circular scale divisions, which is 100 over here, OK? So it is 0 0.01 millimeter. Right, right, right. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Hmm. So here we can write 0 0.01 multiplied by the circular scale. Now count the number of divisions. I guess one, two, three, four. Fourth is coinciding. Right? So 3.04 is the answer. Cool? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's how you calculate reading always. First, uh, 
go uh, to calculate the main scale reading, then calculate least count, and multiply it by uh, the number of division. This is a question for you. Okay. So the question is, two full turns of the circular scale of a, uh, of a gauge cover a distance of one millimeter on scale. The total number of divisions on circular scale is 50. Find the least count. Least count is something that you need to find out in the given scenario. Okay. It is 18, 16 right now. You have two minutes to solve this question. I am going to launch the poll. You will answer me over there only. Is there any issue with the screen and the voice? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yeah. So, Anushka, I guess you need to refresh from your own side and then uh, please rejoin, okay? Poll is live now. You can answer over there. Okay, so time is up and I got only three votes. See, we are at least uh, 14 people over here. Please make it to 10 at least. Otherwise, what is the point to launch a poll? There's so much typing involved in it, huh? <laughs> at least make it fruitful, huh? It's just five votes now. Come on. You have one more minute to please answer. Seven, cool, cool. Come on, three more. Good. One more. Please, come on, give me one more vote. Nope. That's cool. So I'm ending the poll over here. And uh, I guess now result is reflecting to you also. You can check that. And let's solve this question. So the question said that in the two full rotation, the distance covered on the main scale is one millimeter. I told you the value of, uh, wait a second. I told you the pitch is what? Distance moved on main scale in one complete rotation only. Right? So, according to this thing, wait a second. Yeah. So, according to this thing, the pitch would be one by two millimeter. Since in this question, in two complete rotations, you are covering one millimeter only. So pitch would be one by two, now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes. Number of circular scale divisions which are given to you are 50. And if I want to calculate the least count, it is pitch by number of circular scale divisions, which means one by two into 50 and millimeters. So it would be 0 0.01 millimeter which is your option 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 b b so only two people voted for the right option 
can they give me a thumbs up or you know they can raise their hand okay harshida and anushka okay see i have data also na so don't worry it's harshita and anushka right very good so let's take this question as your homework question okay take the screenshot otherwise i will upload it on the link okay that's it okay now it's time to start the kinematics kinematics uh okay i will tell you what it is just wait a second <coughs> what is the date today 22nd okay okay see there are so many branches in physics okay uh, mechanics and then uh, thermodynamics it could be waves uh, electrostats magnetostats electromagnetic induction dynamics we see there are so many branches optics whatever everything so you will explore it uh, you know chapter by chapter class by class there is a very huge portion of mechanics in your class 11 it is started uh, from chapter 3 which is motion in a straight line and it will continue till uh, your chapter mechanical properties of fluids and even some of weights and oscillation are in the part of that mechanics also so basically the 95% of your 11th syllabus is nothing but the mechanics is that okay right yes ma'am yes so kinematics is the first thing that we come across uh, with you know when we start this journey of 11th class so kinematics and then we have dynamics and the other one is statics so these are the three branches of mechanics okay statics is something that we are not interested much into because statics is all about the rest and rest means ki uh, that body is in a balanced in the you know that body is in the influence of balanced forces since it is in rest otherwise if it has some unbalanced force then it would move right yes sir. so we are not much concerned about this branch of mechanics but me kinematics and dynamics is our uh, you know topic of concern kinematics is that branch of mechanics where we are not worry about the reason behind the motion we just study the motion we do not want to discuss why this body is in motion how comes uh, you know how does it moving like this or when it started when it we are not interested in that we just want to study the motion of that body ki okay this is moving right now how far it can go how far it can uh, you know how can we stop it that kind of uh, you know discussion is involving in kinematics but when we are concerning about the reason also then we entered dynamics as simple as that so dynamics is your chapter 5 which is known as laws of motion here we are concerned about the forces and everything here we are cause, uh, uh, you know concerned about the cause of motion but whenever it comes to kinematics we are going to discuss the motion only and it contains two chapters number one is motion in a straight line and the other one is motion in a plane very good see a straight line is nothing but one dimensional motion okay it is one dimensional motion either it is moving in the straight that in the straight direction or it is moving in the upward direction just one dimension is involved in these kind of motions but when it comes to a plane see plane itself uh, you know formed with two dimensional things with two dimensions uh, like xy plane like yz plane xz plane so these are two dimensional things okay two dimensions are involved with it. cool yes ma'am so you can say that motion in a plane is advancement of motion in a straight line so all the basics all the variables of motion we will discuss them in today's lecture in the another lecture whatever we will have we will discuss about the 
projectile motion and in the third lecture we will talk about relative motion is that cool that's how i divided this kinematics into three lectures okay cool 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 okay cool miss wa so the thing is ki i want you to have a great knowledge of uh, or at least the basic knowledge of vectors integration differentiation the basic mathematics so that is something you know yes ma'am yes ma'am okay that's cool and if you uh, understand little bit of hindi and if you have time so you can explore that bitly sheet to uh, you know go through my lectures where i explain these things in detail also i have a session of basic mathematics where i took six classes and i discussed the basic basic things uh, mathematical tools which i will need throughout this physics of 11th and 12th combined so if you can understand little bit of physics oh little bit of hindi then you can go through those videos otherwise it is not fruitful for you because uh, i used you know english over there um okay let's start with the objective and that objective is today we will understand the basic physical quantities and their mathematical treatment and you can also say ki we will understand about the variables of motion see whenever you are going to study the uh, english also so there are few rules now ki first you have uh, the knowledge of alphabets then you know how to make uh, them a word or whatever the basic phenomena is going to over there uh, is going run over there similarly when it comes to mechanics we need to understand few variables like we should understand ki what is distance what is displacement what is velocity acceleration and you know, what is uh, speed and their types we should understand these few things because entire mechanics run around these variables is that okay yes ma'am okay so let's discuss the weightage of this topic it holds 6% the kinematics in last 5 years you can see 13 questions so basically it is 2 3 questions per year which means four uh, sorry which means 8 to 12 marks easily are getting me so this is a this is an important unit for us but before starting this discussion let's start with the revision assessment here uh, you have a question of uh, you know units and dimension which asked in so many exams so let's solve it you have uh, one minute to solve this question i think we are not going to start kinematics in today's lecture it's 1829 right now solve it by 1830 I'm going to launch the poll. okay uh, so time is up and i guess i've got five votes i'm ending the poll over here and the result is live for you also let's discuss this question so the question is ki there is a equation of a state of some gas which is like this p plus a by v square 
multiplied by v minus v and this is equals to r times of t okay they are asking you to find the dimension of a okay if they are asking me to find the dimension of a why i'm going to uh, you know take the trouble for the entire expression i will focus only over here so let's come to discuss p plus a by v square they said this p is the pressure and this v is the volume right see i always ask you to interact in the class to make it little bit more lively and everything so please do that i mean otherwise it's so boring na ki i'm just teaching to few icons over here please uh, keep your mic on and I'll just do a conversation Okay, yeah. Okay, so P is the pressure, okay, V is the volume. Okay, cool. I told you that principle of homogeneity, where you can add only those two quantities which hold the same unit. Two kilogram plus two kilogram will make sense. Two kilogram plus two second will make no sense to us. So if I'm adding these two quantities over here, then I'm very sure about one thing: the dimension of pressure is equals to dimension of a by v square right we need to solve it the dimension of pressure is something which you can calculate by force by area and uh, with the help of force by area so force is mass into acceleration which is mlt minus 2 and area has the dimension l2 now this v square v square is the volume volume is l raised to the power 3 and since you have the square over here so you will get the 6 this is the dimension of a is it okay to everyone Yes, I just yes, skip two three steps over here. Okay, so it would become m l five t minus two. This is the dimension of a. Let me check if it is in the option or not. First option. First option. First option. Very nice. So it's option one. Okay. Now. Let's come to the another question. It is the PYQ of AIMS two thousand two and two thousand seven. So again, it's a repeat uh, a question which holds a repetition. Find out the dimension of torque. And I'm going to launch the poll. You you will have only one minute to solve this question. It's eighteen thirty three right now. Solve it by eighteen thirty four. Okay, so time is up, and I go got nine votes, which is nice actually. I'm ending the poll over here, and the result is like for you also. Let's solve it. Time issue of talk. See, um, I think you have done that chapter system of particles, rotation, and voila, in your school somewhere. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. So, have you know uh, know about this thing called linear momentum? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma okay. So, linear momentum is mass into velocity, right? When it comes yes. to angular momentum, just copy paste the concept. 
see it's momentum now so at, at the place of mass use inertia okay in the place of v use omega okay so remember one thing that this uh -huh. okay okay sorry 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 okay i want to explain something else and i forget it is not that question just forget about it forget about it there is nothing to discuss mm -hmm. okay so uh, this torque torque is the rotational force okay the formula for torque is r into f okay although when it comes to a vector form then torque vector is equals to r cross f but we are not going to discuss that for time being right now okay just it's r cross f r is length and f is mass into acceleration which means mlt minus 2 so it would be ml2 t minus 2 which is your option third this is the dimension of torque see units and dimension uh, whenever you are going to you know take your neat exam at that point of time you have completed the entire 11th and 12th syllabus so units and dimension would be a game for you because you know all the expressions all the quantities and everything is known to you so that is very easy to solve you know at that point of time right now maybe some things are new like i guess torque is equal to this thing is new to you if you knew this formula you can solve the question right yes somebody uh, wants to ask something yes mandusha uh, ma'am formula for torque and work are same work and torque no they are different work is rate of being uh, work is force into displacement Ma oh dimensional a formula dimensionally dimensionally they are yes dimensionally they are equal but the feeling is very very different when it comes to the you know explaining the physics behind them they are very different things but yes okay. dimensionally they are uh, you know together have you uh, ever heard about plan constant yes ma'am okay this planck's constant and angular momentum both have same dimensions okay. yes ma'am yes you can learn these static data for time being okay Let's solve this question. It is also a PYQ of 2009. Solve it. It's 1838 right now. Solve it by 1839. Okay, 1839 is right now. Solve it by 1840. Shikha, do you want to ask something? No, ma'am. Is it done? I got six votes. That would be cool. I'm ending the poll over here. And let's solve this question. So the question says if the dimension of a physical quantity are given by m raised to the power a and l raised to the power b, t raised to the power c. Okay. Then the physical quantity will be. So they are talking about force 
velocity pressure acceleration i would recommend that write down their expressions like for example the dimension of force is m l t minus 2 okay for pressure it is m l t minus 2 oh, by sorry. area and yeah. which means uh, m l minus 1 t minus 2 right when it comes to velocity it is lt minus 1 and when it comes to acceleration it is lt minus 2 lt minus 2 yes now check the answer so when it comes to force the a is 1 but here is uh, 0 8 minute, eight minute. Hmm. So, M is 1, but in this question, A is 0. So, this is wrong now. Right? Yes, ma'am. When it comes to pressure, it is 1 minus 1 minus 2. Yes, it is correct. You can check further also. Although we get the answer over there, we can uh, skip this question after this. Uh, when it comes to velocity, A is 1, but here A is 0. So this is not the answer. When it comes to acceleration, again, mass is going to be zero. So these two options is something that you can, uh, you know, eliminate by just looking at them. Because A is the uh, power of M. And in both these cases, acceleration velocity, it is supposed to be zero. There, you can solve it like that also. Okay. Uh, have I discussed? Uh, yeah, I think somebody wants to ask. Yes, Hashta. Ma'am, upcoming Sunday, uh, which lesson test will be there? Uh, okay, this is not discussed right now. I'll let you know uh, once I confirmed it. Is that okay? Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so that's it. Huh. Have I told you about those uh, four weird quantities that capacitance and magnetic field, resistance, inductance, their dimensions? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. See, uh, once you uh, discover all the topics, all the physical quantities quantities that are involved in the, the syllabus of 11th and 12th, at that point, maybe it is easy for you to understand their dimensions or their formulas. But even in that scenario also, there are a few quantities which are very hard to learn. Okay. So what I do, uh, you know, sometimes there is going to be a trick. Sometimes there is uh, there is no trick. So what are, uh, what are you going to do? You just... Uh, Practice them like so many times that it is, uh, you know, it is something that you just learn by doing the practice. There is no other way. So there are four quantities and I always remember them like this. C, M, R, I. So I don't care how you are going to make the trick out of it. Just uh, keep the, you know, keep this trick in your mind. Keep this slide in your mind for for this, you know, for your paper. Because whenever the units and dimension question is going to be there in your NEET exam, they those questions will not be very easy. If they are asking you about the dimension of force, about the dimension of acceleration, no. Maybe they will ask you about the dimension of resistance, okay, about uh, current or something. So in that situation, you must have few formulas, few dimensions in your mind. And I'm telling you those four dimensions. This C is nothing but the capacitance. It is the magnetic field. Here R stands for resistance. And this I is inductance. You don't need to worry about their meaning right now. Just go with the trick. Okay. Right here. M. L T I M L T I M L T I okay M uh, is for mass length time and I is for current is that okay now yes, you have to remember yes, the parts you have to remember the part so just practice it so many times uh, it's like minus one 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 okay then here it will be a uh, minus two zero two two it is it is 
minus 4 and minus minus wait a minute wait a minute I mean, i'm confused right now uh t raised to the power minus 4 um, minus 2 minus 3 minus 1 yes take a t minus 3 minus 1 minus 2 and then here we have 2 minus 1 minus 2 minus 2 so just remember this you know by repeating it so many times by writing it so many times and I won't able to explain you that how much helpful they are going to be for us. They're very important. Okay. Just practice, practice it so many times, like write it 10, 15 times, and you will uh, somehow learn them. So it is very important and crucial for us. Is that okay? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma I would mark okay, it as the most important slide. This is most important slide. And uh, take this question as your homework. And there's another question. No. And then we will discuss kinematics from next class. Okay. This is okay, your homework. So whatever the pre-work I assigned you for today's lecture, that is continued to another lecture also. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So bye bye. Good night. Have a nice time ahead. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.